Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Welcome to Beach Walk Vlog. And today I wanted to talk to you about advice. Now, I see a lot of advice given on social media by a lot of people, most of which is pretty crap. And most of which is really advice coming from people who don't know the first thing about what they're talking about. Um, it's also from people who are getting shitty results from what they're doing, telling people that they should do what they're doing to get the same shitty results that they're getting, probably, um, which is quite worrying. I find, personally, I find that really worrying. We've got people giving advice to other people, asking for advice, who are getting shitty results from their own training and giving other people the same advice to do what they're doing, which is probably giving them shitty results anyway, like I said. Um, and then the person who's taken the advice doesn't question that advice. Like it doesn't, they, don't, they don't question that advice. They don't say, well, okay, tell me your results from this advice. Tell me what you're doing and tell me the results that you're getting based off this advice. So why are we not justifying our advice or, or having some kind of, um, uh, hi, I'm Paul and I'm a running coach and I've been a running coach for 25 years and I have these certifications, qualifications, I have this much running experience, I run this fast for this distance, here's my PR, here's my stats for the last year and I have not been injured for four years, five years, whatever. Why is it, why, why aren't we quantifying our results with some kind of credential? It doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be a, necessarily in all cases, doesn't need to be a certificated credential. Um, but just some kind of, uh, this is what I do, this is the, this is the advice I'm giving you and here's the results that I have had using this advice. So if I come onto the socials and I say, okay, everybody, and this is what I see a lot of, okay, everybody, I've been a runner for three months and I'm really frustrated. Okay, first thing there is you've been a runner for three months. You haven't even, you haven't even began to go anywhere yet. You know, you've only been running for three months. You have literally no business being frustrated at three months. You should be working on your aerobic base. And, you know, maybe there needs to be a book that says, I want to be an endurance runner. This is what I need to expect. This is the, this is the process, the journey I'm going to go through. Because I see a lot of people with ridiculous expectations of, you know, going from a non-runner to some kind of elite status within three months and it's crazy it's absolutely nuts all right so from there from the, uh, the the question of hey everybody i'm super frustrated i've been running for three months how do i get faster well immediately what you see is speed work hill work sprints hit Weight training, resistance training, strength training, get stronger, blah, blah, blah. With no, with nothing that quantifies their experience with their statement. Now, if somebody comes on and says, hey, everybody, super frustrated, been running three months, how do I get faster? The first thing that I would want to, I would say to that person is, Show me the plan that you are following and then show me the data that tells me that you're following the plan. Right? So, you, you, you must, the first question you must ask, before you can give any advice, is tell me what you're doing, tell me what your goal is, and tell me what plan you're following. 
and from there you'll get the answer generally well I don't have a plan I just want to get faster and um, I don't have any data because I'm not tracking my runs or I can only run a mile before I have to quit right so so what are you trying to get faster at the mile or are you trying to go longer you're trying to go for a, a longer distance and in most cases they're trying to do both they're trying to get faster and go longer and the answer is just keep running just keep doing what you're doing or change what you're doing because you know if you're only getting to a mile now think about it i've been talking now for five and a half minutes i'm probably walked a quarter of a mile over a quarter of a mile look there you go i'm not breathless i'm not out of breath my legs aren't burning I'm not breathing hard at all my heart rate is at 80. so really all you've got to think of is time versus intensity so if i'm if I'm saying I can't run any more after a mile, then you're going too fast and you're not fit enough. It's the same reason why most people can't do recovery runs because the definition of a recovery run is a run that puts me in my recovery zone. And not many people are truly fit enough to be able to run in their recovery zone. Right? So. So don't go for a walk that's putting you in your recovery zone like for me my heart rate's what 80 81 while i'm walking at this speed well this is a recovery this is less than recovery but you know it's still for most for a lot of people this their heart rate right now would be about 110 115 120 so that would be a recovery zone effort take running out the equation right anyway i divulged to a different subject there um so back to the the question of uh how do we advise this or, or taking advice from people so we'll get tons of people commenting oh you need to do speed work hill work da, da, da. and you'll get tons of comments from people with you know just a short answer and nothing of detail so there's really nothing that's actionable out of all of those comments there's nothing that's actionable speed work well they're already doing speed work because they can only run for one mile they're already technically doing speed work because they're way up there they're almost their max sub max heart rate so they're already doing that speed work that's not what they need to do what they need to do is get fitter they need to get fitter so that they can run beyond the mile at a slower speed so they need to get specifically fitter right so it's not just fitter it's specifically fitter aerobically fitter they need a stronger heart they need a better transfer of oxygen All right so going back a a week or so ago i said the the answer to most questions for how do i get faster is simply to run more that's generally the case that will actually be the case probably 95% of the time I reckon so I'm running 20 miles a week and I want to get faster okay well do I do I need to drop my running volume down no probably not do I need to add in a speed session yeah maybe what about some threshold work if I'm not doing it already yeah but you need to question before you give answers before you give advice so question what the person is doing before you give them advice always 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 comes with a load of questions first so what what was the question how do i get faster okay tell me what you're doing tell me what you're doing tell me what plan you're following show me the data of what you are doing what you're actually doing and then we can see whether you're actually following the plan or not so what I can see then is, are you coachable? I need to see, before I, before I start giving anyone advice, I really need to see, and I'm talking more from a coaching perspective, I need to see that you are coachable. 
are you coachable what do i mean by that are you coachable well what it really means is are you willing to take advice are you willing to listen process learn educate yourself and then action on the advice that i'm giving you because if you're not well firstly me coaching you is going to waste your money um, and it's also going to lead you to a lot of frustration so why are you asking why are you asking for advice and then probably you're going to ignore the person giving you the actual advice that's going to help you and i see this a lot again it's another thing i see a lot of and i don't like quantifying every comment that i make on social media with hi running coach here because that really irritates me when i see that it's like i'm trying to one up everybody with hi running coach here but what would be nice is if everybody quantified their answer or qualified their answer should i say with a a backup statement of um here's what i do and here's my pace here's my results right because that would really qualify every statement because there's one one particular post that i saw a couple of days ago which said could someone explain what a tempo run is to me and do it as if i'm a child or as if i'm a you know as if i'm an idiot um so and there was a number of people that commented with just some really really silly kind of uneducated comments that really don't help and this is where it confuses people so much and this is one of the reasons why i have my page and why i have my group and one of the reasons why people don't like my group because i actually give good valid evidence-based uh, knowledge based educated uh, commentary on that page so some of the comments were yeah so a tempo run is a run that's just a little bit slower than your normal run and the first thing i sit there and think is well what's your normal run right what do you what is a normal run well and and secondly a tempo run is generally not slower than your normal run it's probably actually going to be faster than your normal run depending on where you're at with your running so you know saying those kind of things like this oh it's just it's a little bit slower than your normal run no it isn't for most people it's going to be uncomfortable for a period of time that they don't want to be uncomfortable for and that's the reason why they don't do them because they're uncomfortable so i go on and i comment it's a pace it's your maximum sustainable pace for around about 60 minutes so what's your what's your maximum sustainable pace for about 60 minutes that would be your tempo run speed and because it's detailed because it's specific and it asks something from you i.e it asks you a question well what's the speed that you can maximally sustain sustained means this sustaining sustaining for a long period of time it's 50 60 minutes 60 minutes so that would that was my answer and you know people wanted to argue with me uh, okay well go and check up the definition of what tempo pace is and just google it and then there's no need for any anyone to comment with any nonsense comments nobody needs to get involved or here's an idea speak to your coach but of course you don't have a coach or ask the person who wrote the plan we don't know who wrote the plan because you're getting a free plan online or you're getting your friend to give you their plan and they don't know what they're doing either so get a coach get a good coach get one that will explain things to you easily if they truly understand the subject they'll be able to break it down easily to you 
I'll be able to break it down into bite-sized chunks so that you can understand it. And then you're getting your advice from a really good source, hopefully, with a, with a running coach, from a running coach. So, yeah, you know, the socials are great because they give people a place to um, to share, to talk about stuff or whatever. But they can also be a really, they can be a breeding ground for misinformation, bad information, poor advice, and even people arguing with an actual 25-year running coach who's got a ton of knowledge and and uh, uh, certifications in the subject. They're going to argue with that person, and then they're also giving that shitty advice that's getting them the shitty results that they're getting. Is that what you want? No, of course not. So, get a coach. Or ask somebody. Ask them to quantify with their results and qualify their answer with some kind of, you know, well, tell me about your experience. Tell me, tell me your certifications. Because I also see people just copy and pasting their same response to, to, a, to a question about injuries. I see, I see people just literally copy and paste their response. And it's like every post about, you know, when there's an injury question is this like bullet point 12 step uh, 12 step response of what to do in the case of an injury and it's the same thing with every injury and it's also crap advice it's ice it's rest it it's elevate it it's all stuff that's out of date stuff that we know is crap advice now stuff that we know doesn't work there's people still giving out this advice so it's it's really it's kind of frustrating sometimes you know you really want to help people and you you know you, you're doing something really good to help people and then somebody comes along with shit advice that just takes them further away from their goal it's like somebody somebody who's for, for the english people i'll, I'll give you a, a directions to uh manchester from london so you're going to get in your car and you're going to head south to Southampton. That's the bad advice, right? And you've got somebody standing right there going, no, 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 Manchester's north. You need to go north. And somebody else comes, no, 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 you need to go south. And then you just kind of stand there going, uh, okay, how many times have you been to Manchester? Dude giving bad advice. Oh, I've never been to Manchester. Okay, how many times have you looked at the map? Uh, no, I haven't looked at a map. Okay. So, you haven't looked at a map, you've never been there, and yet you're giving advice on how to get there. Okay, I've been there 30 times, because my grandparents used to live there. I know the map, because I studied the map to get there 30 times. You get what I'm saying. And it's the same thing with, like, if you were in San Francisco, or how do I get to uh, Washington State? Well, you've got to go south. Okay, cool. So I get in my car, and I start driving south, and I end up in L.A., and uh, the whole time I needed to have gone north. Uh, it didn't work very well, did it? Because the person giving you advice has never been to Washington State. They don't, they, they, they haven't studied the map. They don't know which way Washington State is. So they just say, well, here's what I did. And they send you south. They send you to LA. So you're now further from your destination that you wanted to get to, right? That's what icing is. And that's that's what stretching does. It takes you further away from your destination of fixing your injury. But there's people out there with literally zero knowledge, with zero qualifications, with no experience in the field of therapy and treatment. And they're giving you advice. And worst of all, you're taking it. And then, of course, because there's seven people saying, I sit, I sit, I sit. When the person who comes along with the actual good advice, which is don't ice it, and here's why, you've seen a Dr. Oz show talking about inflammation and how bad it is, but 
not realizing that your body can't heal without inflammation that's a part of the process so if you take that away you're taking away the healing but of course the person with the bad advice they don't care about that they just want to be right they just want to argue and they they just want to be heard and they want to they want that person to do what they did because it makes them feel better and that's really really shit well, it's shit for me it's shit for you it's shit for everybody because nobody gets the good advice and uh, everybody's worse off. So maybe I should start asking when somebody says, tell me how, how do I get faster? Maybe I should start saying, well, how fast are you? Maybe I should start asking people to, to qualify and quantify their answers with what's your experience, how long have you been coaching, and how fast are you and what's your results? Because it's, it's like regurgitated madness watching some of the stuff on social media. Just regurgitate nonsense over and over again with more nonsense. So, yeah, you know, sometimes social media can be great. It can be fantastic. And most of the time, especially on forums where we've got newbies leading newbies, like, why would you do that? Like, imagine you're, imagine you're, you're learning to drive. You're learning to drive, and you're going to go and ask another learner driver to teach you how to drive. Right? Instead of getting a driving instructor to teach you how to drive, you're going to go and ask another learner driver to teach you how to drive. Does that sound like a good idea? It doesn't, does it? It sounds like a really, really bad idea, doesn't it? It sounds like a shit idea. It sounds like the worst idea ever. So, why are you doing that with your running? Why are you going to a running for beginners social media group and asking beginner runners who have zero experience no knowledge no anything about the thing that you're asking them to help with and then thinking that that advice is going to be good no 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 <laughs> and I'm chuckling to myself because that's what I see all the time and that is what I want to get rid of i want to get rid of this um you know and this is one of the reasons why people don't comment much on my group and why my 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 social media reach goes down is because i i will ask people to quantify and qualify their answers because i want people getting good advice always I want people getting good actionable advice always right it makes sense doesn't it just makes sense if you want to want to get good advice from someone who's got good advice to give find the person with the good advice and get the advice from them don't go to a, a learner driver who doesn't have a license to drive and who doesn't quantify or qualify any of their advice with anything but take their advice, of course, because, you know, it's just easier to do what they're doing rather than actually learn something, right? I'm going to leave that thought with you. That is the Beachwalk blog for the day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.